The expansion links are quite complex little shapes and to machine them I'm going to need to use a rotary table and also to make a jig. Don calls out that they should be made from chrome vanadium steel which is otherwise known as gauge plate. I think that's a bit over the top but as I've got some to hand I'll run with it. For the jig I've cut off a lump of 10mm black mild steel and drilled it and bolted it to the rotary table. Because it's black mild steel the surface is quite rough so I use a slot drill to get a better surface to work against. I should know that before taking these cuts I had centred the rotary table beneath the quill and set the DRO accordingly. My overall approach here may appear to be a little bit convoluted and you'll notice that as I progress through making these parts I frequently swap between Cartesian coordinates that is a straightforward X and Y on the mill table and radial coordinates taken with respect to the centre of the rotary table. I can do this so easily because as I normally do I converted Don's design into a CAD drawing therefore making it very easy for me to vary my reference point. After applying some blue to the jig I first mark out the radial centre line for the eccentric rod pivot point I then mark out the radial centre line that runs through the middle of the slot in the expansion link and then do a quick visual check. Next I reset the scale on the rotary table and mark out the centre line. This line will be my reference for all of my Cartesian coordinates, the first of which I mark out now, starting with the eccentric rod pivot point, followed by the hole at the other end of the expansion link, even though I don't know what that is for just yet. Because I've moved the mill table on the Y axis, the centre of the rotary table no longer acts as a centre point for these radial lines, so I use a wiggler with a magnifying glass to find the intersections. I go on to drill both of these holes, and these will act as reference points for the plate I'm about to put on. With the jig prepared, I go on to drill the corresponding holes in some gauge plate. Next I cut the gauge plate to length and use a file to knock off both the top corners and that middle section. This is so that it doesn't foul with the parts of the jig that I haven't machined flat. To locate the gauge plate on the jig I've turned a couple of pins, one at 2.5mm diameter and the other at 3.2mm. I don't show it in the video but I have also drilled and tapped two M5 holes, both pretty much on the radial centre line at either end of the play that I'm just putting in place. And I use them to firmly clamp the gauge plate onto the jig. After applying some blue I mark out the key radial lines along with the centre line that runs through the middle, the latter being my reference for the Y axis. I'm going to cut the slot radially, that is by using the rotary table. But before I do so I use a slot drill to go through at both ends of the arc and in the middle. And again as I did earlier I use Cartesian coordinates and move the mill table in both the X and the Y axes accordingly. Before I drill the third of these holes I do drill these little relief holes at the right hand side. By drilling the holes at either end of the slot, what I've done is set the limits which will make it a lot easier for me now as I'm using the rotary table. To cut the slot I use the same slot drill and I do it over multiple passes, taking a cut of around about a half mil for each pass. With the slot completed I move on to cutting the external profile, but before I do so I drill and tap another hole so I can put a clamping bolt in the middle of the slot to give it a bit more rigidity. The long side facing the camera is a simple job, so again it's multiple passes round about a half mil cut for each one. The far side is more complex so I take the same approach as I did for the slot by first cutting through at the ends of the arcs 
using the X and Y axis on the mill table and then joining them up by using the rotary table. That's about all I can do in the milling machine, so I remove the part from the jig and I'll complete it now on the bench using my hacksaw and some files. After cutting off the waste and cleaning up the sharp edges with a file, I turn some buttons from silver steel and harden them. First I use them to mark out the profile and then get to work with the hacksaw and files to bring it into shape. Given my painful experience with making the motion plates, I decided to do the expansion links separately. And as always, the second part took significantly less time than the first one, so I'm comfortable that I made the right decision. To complete them, I do need to drill and tap the holes for the expansion link trunnions, and I'll do that when I make the trunnions, which I'll do next, and then I will need to harden them both. But as with the motion plates, I won't be doing that until all the valve gear is completed and working as it should. Thanks for watching.